It was really interesting working with people from Hollywood. Artistically, they're going for a much higher bar. Uh, Malik is notorious for the way he works. He generates a tremendous amount of material and a huge amount of that ends up on the cutting room floor. So uh, we were just happy that any of our material actually survived to the final cuts of the, the movie. Voyage of Time, the IMAX experience. Part of the excitement of working on this project was the chance to work on a project led by Terrence Malick. It was incredibly flattering just to think that, that the renders that we had made for scientific purposes would be considered by an artist like that to be sort of worthy of immortalizing in a sense alongside the rest of their work. Brittany, looking back, over the shoulder to your left, yes. Uh, so we got the invitation to the premiere, and then we had to find out whether we could take guests because both of our wives, I think, threatened to divorce us if we didn't take them to the premiere. <laughs> uh, it was a great time. Uh, myself and Chris Hayward, the postdoc who worked with me on all of this, we weren't sure if our animations had actually made the IMAX cut of the movies. We had originally rendered three different pieces for the movie. The, the one that's prominently featured in the IMAX cut is a simulation of two galaxies colliding and merging into a larger galaxy, something that we think has happened uh, at some level or another to all galaxies. Also, I think they particularly like this clip because the just the shape the two galaxies make as they collide with each other happens to form a heart. <laughs> so. Uh, the other simulation that we rendered is uh, looking down the barrel at a galaxy as it forms. So it's new stars are being born at a rate a hundred times faster than in our galaxy today. Originally was rendered in a grayscale and also from quite a large distance. So the observer was far, far away from the action. And they had us really zoom right in on the action and create sort of a 3D effect and also change the color palette to a reddish orange color palette. So it really looks like you've gone right into the middle of some giant inferno, which is probably a better visual analogy for what it really is anyways. The science has reached a point where it can visually make presentations that are as stunning as any artist's rendering of some of these things. I'm encouraged by this. I mean, I think this is really exciting. And, and the hope for people like me is that this is signaling a sort of revival of public interest and will to, to do these things just for the sake of doing them because in the end NASA isn't funded because of the technological spin-offs even though they, they do have a big impact. It's funded because people get excited about this stuff and just want us to do it and that's largely driven by things like these kinds of visuals either in movies or from the Hubble telescope or something like that. <laughs>